So to get the inside track for Rangers' new signing, Diallo, I am delighted to be joined by Man United fan and host of Friday Night Counter-Attack podcast, Hams. Hams, welcome to Club Act 22. Thank you for agreeing to come on. Tell everybody a wee bit about your podcast first, mate. Hello, everyone. Thanks for listening to Club Act uh, 22. First of all, thanks for having me on the podcast because when someone comes onto our podcast and they reciprocate by inviting me back, it's such a it's such a good feeling. So thank you, first of all, for having me back um, for the first time on your podcast, Scott. So thank you very much. And hopefully Rangers get a win on Wednesday against Celtic. Got to throw it out there. Got to throw it out there. Um, <laughs> good start, my, mate. People, people will like that, mate. That was a good start. My allegiance to Celtic just ended when you appeared on our podcast. I was like, nope, I have nothing more to do with Celtic. Let's throw away that T-shirt that I had um, from good. Celtic Park. No, no allegiances to Celtic anymore. But no, thank you for having me. And um, yeah, I'm the host of Friday Night Counter Attack, which is a football and mental health podcast that we like to promote on most social medias nowadays, on YouTube, on TikTok, on Twitter, but mostly on Instagram, to be fair, and on your favourite streaming platforms as well. So we like to talk about anything regarding mental health. We're not afraid of the odd topic of conversation that's a bit too difficult to have um, with your family, your friends, but we'll have it with mates and we'll have it with people who can appreciate the tough times that people have had over the pandemic in the last couple of years as well. And we also talk about football. So we have quite a few Man United fans. We have an Aston Villa fan who probably gets us more views because some of his views are good and they actually make sense compared to a lot of Villa people in the media that we see as well. Um, and we've got a Chelsea fan as well who just hasn't turned up because Chelsea are just winning and he has no reason to complain about them. So we're pretty good. We're pretty good for the time being. But no, we like to uh, diversify our, our audience because we always talk about different football and topics. So fortunately, we got Scott from uh, Club at 22 to come on to our podcast previously in 2021. And it was brilliant because we got a lot of uh, viewers from Scotland because of the very kindly um, shared post that you did, Scott. So thank you very much for that. And thank you to um, all the listeners that listen from Scotland. Thank you very much. No, it's my, my absolute pleasure, mate. Yeah, you had me on to discuss Stephen Gerrard's departure and obviously one of the boys that you do the podcast with is a Villa fan. So I was still rather bitter about Stephen Gerrard at that point. Giovanni Van Bronckers was not uh, was not, was, was not appointed as manager as of yet. Um, but uh, I'm over it. <laughs> I'm over it just. I was sent to you just before recording. He's no longer on my wall behind me, mate. So I am, I'm over it. It's, we've moved on. Uh, but yes, uh, I'm delighted to have you on, mate. As I say, no, no one better to speak to the fact that you're a massive Man United fan and you're right into your football, so we'll move on to uh, Ahmed Diallo himself. Man United signed him for a deal worth around reports, say around 35 million euros, 37 million euros, something like that. Rangers are getting him for a six month loan, obviously, no option to buy, uh, included. Man United are in no interest of getting rid of him. They clearly think he's got a, a massive, massive future uh, ahead of him. So, what can we expect from him? What kind of player is he? First of all, I have to say thank you very much to Rangers for being the ones that take off Ahmad Diallo from our from our roster, from our squad for the next six months. Because as Man United fans, but I can only speak for myself, for myself, I've just wanted to see the boy play. It's like in the media, you'll get comments of Donny van der Beek not playing because he was signed for 40 million and is an established player, this, that and the other. But for a lot of Man United fans, when we see Ahmad Diallo, the only time we see him is in training pictures. And when you're seeing him in training pictures, it's like, Oh, but it's still in the club. It's okay. He can he can get on the bench for this game. It doesn't happen. So he's only played around nine, ten games for Man United. On his debut for Man United against AC Milan last season in the Europa League, he scored a backwards header. So he actually made a very good impression of us straight away. Um, it was when the likes of like Marshall and uh, Rashford they were just like being overplayed and they were exhausted, losing some form really. And Greenwood and Diallo were kind of up front for us as well. And yeah, uh, I saw I got the opportunity to watch him live this season. Uh, for Man United against Young Boys. And he's someone who likes to take on a man properly. He'll happily um, give them a shoulder. He'll give them a quick feint. He's someone that likes to cut in from the right-hand side and shoot with his left foot. But he can shoot with his right foot and he's got a good head on him as well. But he's a very small, very, I like to say fragile young player as well. He's still raw. He's still got the ability to take on a man and shoot and score and, and dribble. But I think it will be a coming of age for him to come to Rangers because there were li links with him to Derby, links with him to Birmingham. But I think for someone who's played at Atlanta before when they were um, pushing for Champions League places, pushing for the top four in Italy, then moving to Man United and not really getting a game. At only 18, 19 years old, he was already doing well for Atalanta and somewhat for Man United. Um, I'd like to see him at least being one of those kind of 60, 70 minute substitutions every week for, for Rangers, getting some game time, 
getting used to British football in the way that they have um, previously in the past as well. Because you've had a lot of young players come from England, come into Rangers and Celtic respectively. Dylan Levitt from Man United, I believe, is at Dundee United as well, getting some game time in centre midfield as well. So I'm looking forward to this and I'm I'm really happy that he's not going to be spending the next six months on the bench uh, for Manchester United. Well, I certainly think we, he's been brought in not to sit on the bench, in my uh, in my personal opinion, looking at it from the start. Obviously, we've just lost Giannis Hadji for the rest of the season yeah. due to uh, it's a, I think, reconstruction on his knee that happened, so he definitely won't feature for the rest of this season, uh, and he'll be maybe pushing it for the start of next. So we were definitely in the market looking for uh, th- this type of player. In terms of where he plays, is he an out-and-out winger, or will he play really anywhere across the front the front line? Honestly, we've only really seen him as a right winger and as probably like a, a striker. So he played a game last season against Wolves where it was like Daniel James, Ahmad Diallo, Mason Greenwood and Anthony Alanga and one matter. So they all were just rotating between um, the front three as well. And from what we've seen this season, Ralph Ragnick fancies Anthony Alanga a bit more than uh, Ahmad Diallo. I think he probably wants Diallo to get a bit more game time for him to fill out a bit more as well and get used to English football a bit because he's been playing in our reserves, um, Scott, recently. And from last season. And he looked just too good for the reserves, taking on three, four plays in a row, um, playing as a striker in that as well, playing as a left winger in the reserves as well. But really in the first team, it's mostly been from the right when we've had an opportunity to play him. Because as a Man United um, starting eleven, you'd have like Rashford as your first choice left winger. Then you'd have Martial. And then it would be someone like um, Ahmad or Ilanga. But realistically speaking, or even Pogba when it's fit as well. So he'd be like fourth, fifth choice for a left winger. And he isn't, we haven't really seen that creativity of passing and flair through the middle for him to be like an attacking midfielder, but probably a second striker. It would re- work really well if you had a second striker that you needed someone to feed off the top with, I would say. So the, well, the way Geo's kind of set up as well now, um, for some games we have only one holding midfielder and he, he likes to play quite attacking. Uh, you know what it's like, some of the games in Scotland, mate teams are just happy to defend against strangers uh, and so we, we always play just kind of one holding midfielder. Joe Aribo uh, is our kind of number 10 if you like putting a putting a name on it and he's been sensational this season, absolutely sensational. So he is more to fill. I think he'll be more focused on the kind of right wing. Gio really likes wingers. He likes wingers to get the, the ball and to take on the defender. So I, I'm looking forward to and from what I've heard, the boy is he's absolutely rapid. So uh, you're saying he hasn't had much game time. Is he, is he match fit? Would you say that he's match fit and he, he probably could make an appearance? I'd say he's match fit, but I think Gio would be a bit cautious to throw him in straight into um, the deep end straight away because he, he played against um, Young Boys in December and he's had a couple of games um, recently as well. But again, just cameo appearances. He was on the yeah. bench against Aston Villa in the FA Cup. Um, he made the bench, I believe, against Brentford, but he didn't come on. And you're just there thinking, like, what more does this kid have to play, uh, have to do to play? But he's been fit. He hasn't really had an injury. He didn't go with the Ivory Coast or he wasn't selected um, for the Ivory Coast to go to the African Cup of Nations. So you're getting someone who's fresh, someone who's realistically just ready to play. And I believe that with um, the likes of like Morelos and Ryan Ken as well, you said Hadji's out for the season. Um, but when you've got someone who likes to take on a man properly, he'll be able to actually give Rangers a bit more in the, in those kind of games when people like to sit back, like you said. When people are sitting back, he can make the difference in taking a player one on one instead of trying to pass it through all the time as well. Yeah, I say I'm, I'm obviously it's 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 easy for Rangers fans to get excited about it because of the price that Man United paid for him. I know the money in the English football is inflated ridiculously. And uh, you have the Man United but... tax as well. Add another ten million or twenty million <laughs> on the Man United. <laughs> yeah. If he um, went to Brighton, it would have been 15, 20 million. He would have been 30, right. 7, 38. But that, that's how it is as a Man United fan. You get Edward would just overpays for the sake of yeah, overpaying. Speak- even at that, though, Man United have still got a fantastic scouting network. They've still got a fantastic youth academy. So they're they're obviously investing in the, the future of, of this lad, um, which is exciting. It really is. Do you think he's going to be able to cope with the Scottish game? Because, you know, it's a bit rough and tumble, as you know. My my gut feeling is no, honestly. I think he'll have... He'll, he'll, he'll score the goals, he'll get the assists, but he'll come back thinking, I never want to go back to Scotland again. <laughs> It'll be one of those when you're kind of thinking, because a lot of players, when they come into Man United, they prefer the foreign loans. They prefer going to Spain or they go to Portugal yeah. or they go to Belgium, which is great for them, but it doesn't ready them for Man United properly. 
So when you see people making the hard uh, decisions, like James Garner going to Nottingham Forest and Dylan Levitt going to Dundee United, and you're seeing these kind of players staying in Great Britain, really, to actually get some game time and get a feel of the, the climate, the atmosphere of the crowd, this, that, and the other. It's really brave what An uh, Anthony Alanga has done to stay in the Man United team. And for him to stay in the Man United team has forced out Ahmed Diallo, our 37, 38 million pound signing, because Alanga was someone who could have gone on loan, but he didn't. And then the new manager came in, Ralph Ragnick, and has preferred him so much. So uh, Anthony Marshall has left. Jesse Lingard is looking at leaving. And now Ahmed Diallo has gone on loan to Rangers. So it's, it goes to show that it's all kind of down to the mentality of the player. And I think the mentality of Ahmad Diallo is fantastic. Is is a good boy that I think we're going to see a lot from in the future. But realistically, if this can be like the coming of age for Ahmad Diallo, get an SPL title in um, for Scotland, uh, for, for Rangers in Scotland, it'd be a great start, I would say. But yeah, it would be a great start. And I hope he does that. And I hope he helps that, obviously, mate. Uh, so. and just a quick question. Um, yeah, just a quick question. With Gio Van Bronckhorst, is he more is he more pressing or less pressing than Steven Gerrard? Like, does because Gerrard used to press from the front a lot from Rangers, and he does for Aston Villa. How does Gio Van Bronckhorst deal with like when players are coming out from the back from um, an opposition point of view? He's definitely wound it down a wee bit. If I'm being honest, we're not as we're not as as keen to press as high up the pitch. I would say as soon as we get to they get to our halfway line, we'll start to really put the pressure on. Okay. Uh, I think I, I think he it's. It, it will be it will be required. I think uh, Diallo will be required to do some legwork. He's going to need to track back from time to time, especially when Tav gets forward, um, James Tavernier gets forward. But that stopped as well. We're not really we only really push Tav forward as such. I mean, Barisic on our left hand side, he still gets forward from time to time, but it's much more balanced than it used to be. Gerard used to be as soon as the centre midfielder get the ball, the wing backs were up, were away. Yeah. Uh, it's not really like that anymore. That the wee. We were conceding goals for fun under Gerard. Geo's came in and just stopped it. It's just we're just not conceding goals. I think it's now two goals in ten or eleven games that we've conceded, which is remarkable considering we'd conceded about two on the opening day of the season. So it's 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 one of those things that I'm I'm very happy with Geo right now. Uh, and this is the first time that we've made a signing and we've been calling out for a signing as Rangers fans. We've been calling out for somebody to get brought in this window because we feel like we needed a wee bit of an, an injection and something. And the French players, if you like, that we had for his particular position haven't cut it. Uh, Scott okay. Wright, who came from came to us from Aberdeen, uh, he really hasn't cut it. And I'm a, I'm a fanboy of, of Scott Wright, but he really hasn't. He hasn't cut it. So, yeah. yeah he's been, um, he's been substituting in the last couple of games, hasn't he, Scott Wright? yeah. Yeah, and, the, and is the one that is the one that Ahmad would look to challenge as a right winger, as a right. Oh, player. definitely. Oh, I, he would walk into the team as far as I'm concerned ahead of Scott Wright right now. Um, Ryan Kent's is the left wing, and it always will be Ryan Kent's. And Joe Aribo is kind of playing in the middle. He's pretty much a free role. Joe Aribo he plays wherever he wants to play. Mm. Uh, so yeah, uh, I mean, obviously Morelos is away for Colombia just now. Um, he's on international duty, but I, I can't see Diallo playing through the middle, I think it would either be Sakala or Cedric Itten that we brought back from, from Germany on loan, because yeah, he wasn't getting a game there, so I yeah. think they'll stick with him, and Kamar Roof as well, Kamar Roof's there, I forgot, but he's just getting himself back from injury. So was before... It, wasn't Itten back from um, loan already? Didn't he play against Living, Livingston? Or did he? Yeah, he's came back, yeah, he's came back again, though. He's not I as great as there's... Sakala. No, well, I, 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 people really like Sakala because if even when you hear the guy talking, he just smiles. Me, everybody's just kind of fell in love with Sakala. So, I, I, Itton's a strange one. Uh, I, I can't fault his effort. I can't. I can't fault his his attitude. His attitude's great, even when he's getting subbed off. He sprints off the pitch to give as much player like like he doesn't sulk, and I think he's really going to try his hardest to fight his way into the team. I just don't know if he's got the ability and I don't want to write the guy off too soon, but in terms of, we, everybody knows who our number one striker is. It's Alfredo Morelos and it will be until Alfredo Morelos decides to leave. So it's always going to be um, Morelos, but Itton's, he's just, he's not really quite, he's not really quite been there. So before, before I let you leave me uh, and I'll thank you again for coming on. Are you shocked that the Allos came to Rangers and do you see him having a future at Man United? Uh, I'm shocked, but for the right reason. Because I'm shocked because he's actually gone to a very good club. He's actually gone to a club where he can actually develop. They've got a rich history. 
they've got a great competition against Celtic and against the likes of Aberdeen um, in the SPL. The championship is also a very good one that we like to send our players to, but it's just the fact for it, it's a six month loan. Personally, I would have seen something like a, a 12 or an 18th month loan. I think that would have been much better for Ahmed Diallo's development as well, because he's someone, um, I didn't get to it in the last conversation, but he is someone that will press from the front. He's someone that will work back with his right back as well. And for someone like James Tavernier, a great experienced right back, it will do Ahmed Diallo the world of good. Because when you have some uh, two right backs who are youngsters in Diogo Dallo and Arwan Bissaka, who, in mm. my opinion, aren't even as good as James Tavernier, he'll what? be learning a lot. He'll be learning a lot from James I'll Take Tavernier. that, mate. I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Arwan Bissaka is, is, I've said it before, is the, is the biggest waste of £50 million pounds I've ever seen at Manchester United um, Football Club. Like, we just saw him for a season and thought, yep, let's splash, let's splash £50 million. And he's the same player as, as what we signed him. But James Tavernier is someone who actually went to Scotland, who actually did really well to get into the Rangers side and become um, one of the leaders in that Rangers side as well. So I think it'll be a great dressing room experience for Ahmad to get out of his and he's not really in a comfort zone at Man United because no one's really comfortable at Man United unfortunately it's just a poor situation the way it is but he'll be with surrounded leaders like Goldson, Morelos um, uh, obviously having Gio Van Broncos as, as a coach as well realistically speaking I'd love to see him have a future at Manchester United but the fact is when you're a Man United youngster coming through there's always the next person coming through or there's always the next big sign into sign so you're never yeah. sure who's going to be the one to stick in it like everyone thought by now Marcus Rashford would be the main man at Manchester United he'd be the one to be doing it but because he's been not as great recently we've signed Edison, Edison Cavani we've had Cristiano Ronaldo come back in there was talks of him leaving after his contract and you're just there thinking could it be like another Jesse Lingard situation where he just runs down his contract and leaves at, at the end of it but realistically speaking Ahmed Diallo has shown nothing wrong in his mentality in his attitude in the way that he plays football. He plays football in the right way as a winger, in my opinion, and is a really good team player. And I would love to see him have a proper 10, 15-year career at Manchester United, get in, in the records, get him scoring a lot in the Premier League and the Champions League. But realistically speaking, I think for the next six months, I'd say enjoy what you have because he's a fantastic young player to watch. I am I am very much looking forward to it, mate. I, I really am. Uh, as I say, it's a, a big name and the link happened and you start to see it. And he's been tipped a few times. I've seen different rumours about him. I said to you before when I was on your pod, mate, and my listeners and our listeners know that I am not. I'm a bit of a... I'm an ignorant uh, football supporter. I really only tend to watch Rangers. That's life commitments as well. I don't have a lot of time um, mm. to be sitting just watching games, but... I I know he's been highly tipped as one of the kind of stars of the future. If if you like, there's a few comments being made about him. So looking forward to see it. And I think that the point that you made about Tavernier being behind him, Tavernier is now a hardened Rangers player. Tavernier's went through some amount of some amount of bad with us before he he finally got the good, and and he he now deserves to. To, to wear that captain's armband with pride and having somebody like him behind, uh, having somebody like Taft behind Diallo, uh, it should do him the world of good. Tav will be able to speak him very much through games and Tav is our leader. He's one of one of the many leaders that we have within the team. Um, so I think it will do do wonders for him. I was going to release this tonight, mate, uh, during our, our preview pod, but we've went on for a wee bit. So I'm actually, I'll just release this pretty much as soon as we've finished recording since we've enjoyed the conversation so much. Uh, yes, I'll lovely. post. I will post this up. Um, thank you very much, hey, Hams, for coming on. I really do appreciate it, mate. Tell everybody where they can find your podcast. Uh, once again, thank you for having me, Scott, on this on this podcast. It's a great podcast to listen to, especially if you want to get angry that your team has lost to Rangers as well. So if you want to hear the boys uh, make fun of you, um, make fun of Rangers beating Aberdeen and Livingston, by all means, just listen to this podcast and throw all your hate comments through as well because it brings up the traction on, on their side as well. But no, if you want to listen to me on uh, on our podcast, Friday Night Counter-Attack, we're on Spotify, Apple Music. Um, we're on Amazon Music as well. We're doing really well on, on YouTube, on Instagram. We'd love some more followers as well. Get involved in our weekly conversations that we have with our followers. And we look forward to seeing you all soon. Scott, thank you very much for your time as always. My pleasure, mate. Uh, I'll leave all the links for Friday Night Counter Attack in the description for this pod. Thank you again to Hans for coming on. We'll be back on later tonight with a, a club preview ahead of the, the Ross County game. Uh, so we'll speak to you all then. We are Club at 22, the Rangers podcast. Cheers, everybody.